Vamos aquí con Klaus Mayer, jefe de Mercedes-Benz Commercial Vehicles en Estados Unidos. Well, uh, Klaus, thank you very much for having us here at the home of a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter in uh, Charleston. A very important vehicle for uh, the, the brand, right? Uh, it's very important vehicle for the brand and uh, the US is uh, for the, the Sprinter brand actually it's uh, the second largest market in the world so the answer is yes it's a very important vehicle for the Mercedes-Benz brand. So something that uh, a lot of people don't know about like actually commercial vehicles in general for Mercedes-Benz are like number one in the world by far right? Yeah we're the largest commercial vehicle manufacturer and if you look at our portfolio we sell everything from Mercedes-Benz buses, Mercedes-Benz Class 8 tractors, construction equipment uh, in the United States, Freightliner, Western Star, uh, Thomas built buses, that's all under the uh, Daimler portfolio as well, joint ventures in India for example, Bharat Benz or uh, in, in Asia with uh, Fuso, so uh, we got a pretty round uh, lineup of commercial vehicles all throughout the world. Uh, a lot of uh, global manufacturing sites all the way from Latin America, Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, uh, North America, uh, and then of course Europe, uh, Asia and the subcontinent. So yeah. So and this is something that didn't start like last week. <laughs> you have a lot of history behind it too. Well no we didn't start last <laughs> week and we didn't start actually last year either. Uh, it goes back to the history of, of, of the company and uh, as you might know our fathers, uh, founding fathers uh, Gottlieb Daimler and Carl Benz uh, actually only in miles maybe 50 miles apart from each other developed not only more or less the first cars together independently uh, but a year later in 1896 uh, they more or less invented the commercial vehicle driven by today we would call it a combustion engine so uh, there's a lot of history there's a lot of experience within the company uh, not only relative to cars but as well regarding commercial vehicles yeah, absolutely and obviously being like so so rich in history and like so rich in engineering design and all that that's what puts you in number one uh, in this category and many others well I think our company has an engineering driven background uh, that's 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 definitely the case and uh, the tech lines if, if you take the two different divisions in the United States under the Mercedes-Benz brand where it's Mercedes-Benz passenger cars it's the best or nothing uh, it's all about safety it's all about quality and uh, it's all about the customer experience Uh, that applies to vans in the United States as well with a tagline born to run. Uh, we're a true believer in safety, we're a true believer in quality and uh, as well the customer is our number one focus and I think that ultimately will lead. So in the case of the Sprinter, uh, who is your customer here in the United States? Well, you know, they, they I call the Sprinter always the Swiss Army knife of vans, <laughs> okay? And uh, you see that uh, in, in the segmentation to, to, to where we sell to. And it ranges from upfitted luxury limousines to normal livery services uh, all the way to refrigerated vans, box trucks. Uh, we're very successful in the RV industry as a carrier vehicle for, for, for the modification or for the outfit. We have parcel deliveries, we have... Uh, like FedEx, uh, like for example, all those kind of companies. Like these kind of companies, yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it's coming down to the quality. And we got the, 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 the little business owner, an electrician, a plumber, a uh, flower shop. Uh, it, 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 goes it's the entire array of uh, potential uh, commercial customers uh, as well private consumers for the passenger van for bigger families yeah. uh, so it's 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 very versatile you can do everything versatile. in this case actually a TV studio obviously this is radio but here we have one two three screens like a big uh, mixer for uh, for audio and we're sitting very comfortable in here yeah we do, <laughs> it works. We do. It's, a, it's a perfect car for almost everything you know working work working space we have a lot of guys Guys who use it as a mobile office with all the amenities you can have internet access yeah. you can work in the truck somebody else is driving you uh, it's it's uh, the versatility which expresses itself in the product offering which is you know two different wheelbases three different over uh, body length roof heights 
GVWRs, uh, uh, we got round about uh, 50 option packages plus round about 200 standalone options. There's something for everybody and now very exciting and why you're here then uh, we just launched the 4x4 vehicle which will be available. A pretty amazing off-roading uh, capabilities and, and, and too. You huh? And you drove it and uh, it's, it's uh, a pretty amazing product which will even further uh, and enhance our capabilities to take on different customer groups and, and yeah. segments different and, weather also like and different weather in Canada. and uh, different environments so I'm very excited about yeah. it. So the, the off-roading test that we did obviously 99% of the owners of this vehicle will never put it to that but you can do it easily. You know what it's it's might appear being over-engineered the answer is yeah. not because I think given the consumer or the actual uh, the buyer, the, the, the user of the vehicle, the knowledge that your truck can do it in case it needs to do it. Yeah. Uh, that's a mother, rather better situation to be in than better having saying, that not, uh, yeah. I'm not so sure whether I can do it or not. So uh, I think, you know, that 4x4 will do very well for us. And at the end of the day, it's it's an on-demand system. Yeah. So you can drive it as a 4x2 if you're going on the highway. And if you need it, it's there. And then like the other big uh, thing is like the the engine, this all diesel engine for these vehicles. Here it's all state, diesel right? engines. Uh, we have a six cylinder diesel engine, three liter, around about 188 horsepower with 325 foot pound of torque. And then uh, we just launched with Mali of 14 last year, four cylinder diesel engine. Uh, it's a 2.1 liter, 166 horsepower, 270 roundabout uh, foot pound of torque. It's it's providing enough power, but uh, uh, which you need for moving such a van uh, 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 along. But I think it, it's the right amount of power. Uh, in combination with the diesel engine, it provides you with a superior fuel economy. And only to throw out a number, the four-cylinder shows an 18% improvement in fuel economy over the six-cylinder, who was already fantastic and best in class in the United States. Yeah. So, so another over, step. Overall, that's like what brings down also the, the cost of ownership and like over profits for the owners and more money in your pocket. Well, at the end of the day, this is how we look at the commercial vehicle environment uh, and, and, and the market. It's all about total cost of ownership. Yeah fuel economy then we just extended our service intervals up to 20,000 miles uh, depending on driving behavior and, and conditions of course but uh, extended that one means less time in the service drive uh, than fuel economy I mentioned then you heard it yesterday during uh, a presentation uh, the residuals are very strong we got Three years in a row uh, awarded uh, the best value fleet vehicle in the United States by Vincentric. So uh, overall, we're we're in a pretty good spot right now. Let's say it this way: you got to work even harder to stay in a pretty good spot. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but uh, this is what we're here to do. So. Excellent. So, Klaus, a final question: uh, How much? I know the prices are different one for the pi final product once it's outfitted as the needs of the client. But what's the base prices for these vehicles? You know, actually, uh, uh, the the base entry price, uh, the entry price for our entry level model, which is uh, we call it the 144 wheelbase with a low roof. It's actually, believe it or not, below $36,000. So uh, the model year 15 starts at $35,995 without shipping. Uh, and I think that's a pretty good value proposition. So when people talk about like you get a lot of car for your money, this is the, the true example of and that. And you get a bigger car for your <laughs> money too. So uh, now I think uh, it's, it's a lot of car with all the safety features, you know, and if you talk about uh, safety, you got to talk about uh, uh, the ABS system, which everybody has, but load adaptive ESP, mm -hmm. uh, dual airbags, uh, it's, it's a uh, crosswind assist, of course, I need to mention that, model year 15, brand new. Yeah, we uh, just add to that, and that basically is a 90 mile. Uh, wind the gust that cross over where we are driving and the car doesn't even fill it. That's like a category 2 hurricane <laughs> Let me say it this way. I don't want to be outside in that kind of wind gusts 
but uh, you experience it yourself. The car does not jump a lane, it does maybe jump an inch or so, and uh, yeah. the electronic system, the way it applies the brakes, makes for safe driving, and again, this is what the brand stands all about, right? Beside all the other brand values we have, which I mentioned earlier. Well, thank you very much for having us here again, and for your uh, hospitality, and all the information about the new 2015 Spring Sprint. It was my pleasure. Good thank to you. see you. Thank you. Bye. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.